Welcome to Pour Painting with Ron. Um, today we're going to be doing another multi-flip cut pour. If you saw the last one I did, I used a, a glue and water mix as my pouring medium. But today I'm going to be using Floetrol and we'll see what difference that makes. Well today I'm going to be doing my painting on this large uh, 40 centimeter by 80 centimeter canvas. I think it's 16 by 32 inches or thereabouts. Um, it's a thin edge canvas and as usual I've prepared the back with some giant push pins and some painters tape just to keep it a bit tidy. Now um, I've made sure the canvas was nice and tight. I sprayed the back with a little bit of water and blew, blow dried it with a blow dryer just to tighten it up a little bit because you don't want a loose canvas and all your paint sinking into the middle or pooling into the middle. But anyway, today I'm going to be using all Montmartre colours. For a canvas this size I need about 1,500 grams of mixed paint. If I was doing another technique like um, uh, a swipe or something I'd use much less. But for a multi-flip cut pour where I do want interesting cells happening I do need quite a lot of paint. So I've mixed up all Montmartre colours today. I'm using sap green and light green. I'm using thalo blue and cerulean blue. And I'm using some white as well. Now I want a sort of a very light coloured sort of painting. So I've mixed up twice as much light green, light blue and white as the other two colours. I do need the darker colours just to give a little bit of contrast in my painting. So overall I mixed up about one and a half kilograms of paint. I used one to one paint and flow troll with a little bit of water if it was a little bit thick but you'll see the consistency in a bit. So if you haven't seen flow troll before this is what it looks like. I'm in Australia, so I've got the Australian flow troll. I believe it works a little differently to the flow troll overseas, but you may find um, you can modify yours just by adding a little bit of wood conditioner to your flow troll. So I've heard. Um, up to get my cells today, I'm going to be using some silicon oil. Now, normally in a glue and water mix, I'd put one drop per 40 grams of paint. But I found that using the flow troll as well as silicon, using that much, you end up with way too many cells happening. So I use about half the amount of silicon in my colours. So you'll see that in a bit. But anyway, let's get started. Righto, here we are with all my paints mixed up. As you can see, I've got twice as much of the light green, light blue and white as I have of the sap green and the thalo blue and when I put them together I won't put all my dark colors together and my light colors together I'll I'll vary them up a little bit so I'll do it like that oh no I don't want the greens next to each other no I'll do it that way and we'll see you see what happens okay now you can the consistency is reasonably thick if I pour it off I get a little mound on a mound and if I do a little twirly thing with my Spoon, the bump stays there for about three seconds. If it's too thin, I'm just going to get way too many cells. I'm still going to get more than I would with glue and um, water. And they'll be a little uncontrolled, but that's sort of the look I'm going for today. All right. Now, um, on this cup, how much do I have? Oh, I've got about... Oh, how much do I have in this one? About 400 grams in this and 200 grams in that. So in the 200 grams, um, I might put ooh, three drops in. drops in the bigger ones. Now normally I don't put it in the white but today I'll put it in the white and I'll see what happens. Can only try. Okay, it doesn't matter. You don't have to put it in the white if you don't want to. The colours are the most important. Now you do need to mix it in reasonably well. 
because you don't want great big huge blobs of silicon sitting in your paint. You want it reasonably evenly distributed throughout your paint. A little bit of silicon goes a very long way. I'm trying not to mix too much air in. It's inevitable that you will get air in. That's why um, a blowtorch is useful to have, as you'll see in a bit. You don't need a fancy blowtorch. I just got mine from the hardware store. You buy the torch bit separately to the can of butane gas. It's cheaper from a hardware store than if you would get a fancy one from a cookery shop. They both do exactly the same thing. Now I'm looking for a, an interesting to look at cool coloured painting today because it's a stinking hot day outside so I wasn't going to do one with red and yellow and orange on it it'll just make me hotter and I'm in the garage as well so the sun is shining on the garage doors making it extra hot it was going to be 34 degrees here today in Ipswich in sunny Queensland but in this garage, I think it's hotter. They forecast storms later, so hopefully that'll cool everything down. Now, if you didn't see my um, multi-flip cut pour from last week using um, glue and water mix, I'll put a link to it at the end of this one, just so you can see the difference between using um, glue and water as your pouring medium and flow troll as your pouring medium for this technique when you use silicon in your paint mix the results are really quite different well hopefully <laughs> It'd be funny if it turned out exactly the same today but you you never know now i'm going to use five cups today in my pour the bigger your canvas is, the more cups you are going to use and the, the larger the cups will be. If you're just starting up, starting out with a small canvas, you might get away with just one on a tiny canvas, one or two. And as you gain in confidence, then you can add more cups to bigger canvases. The technique doesn't change, it's the same every time. But do make sure you have enough paint. You can always tip off excess, but you run into problems if you don't have enough. The cells just won't work. You may have trouble covering your corners and edges too if you don't have enough. At least my painting should dry fast in this weather. Winter, it takes ages. Summer, it's really, really quick. I think we're almost done here. Just once more for good measure. The blue is quite thick, hopefully. Not too thick. If your paint's too thick, your cells are going to be really tiny. But too thin and they'll just go out of control. But it's, a, it's a bit of a balance and it depends a little bit on the look that you're after. Okay, I think we're done. Now I'll just put them on the side. bring in the cups that I'm going to pour with. These are large ones as well. I wash these ones up because they're expensive. So I'm going to do plenty of washing up at the end of the video today. All right, now I'll start off with a, a little layer of the dark blue. 
You don't have to do all the cups exactly the same. I am today, but you don't have to. And then I'll put in some of my lovely light green. Now I was wanting to layer it, but it's a bit hard from this height. It tends to plop in. It's a bit easier once the cup gets a bit emptier. But you do want the, the paint sitting in nice layers. Don't be too stingy with your layers. Otherwise the colours like blend too much. A bit more in this way. Ah, there we go, not too bad. Now before I put the blue in, I'll just do a bit of white. The white's quite thin. doesn't matter. Just put these aside, make some space. Bring this back in. Hopefully, you can see that. Okay, now I could flip the cups over by hand, but that gets messy. So I use my metal wall scraper to put the cups upside down on this canvas. Works really, really well, as you'll, you'll soon see. Okay, so what, I'll arrange my cups first to get the spacing sort of right. About the middle, and that's about right, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right, now I'm going to have to, I'll put them on this side and then I'll turn my canvas around so I don't have my back to the camera. So you just put the paint scraper on the top, then flip. And just slide it on like so and you don't get paint everywhere. Oh, I'm getting cells already on my paint scraper. You can make final adjustments before you um, do your painting. Sometimes I put yellow in this as well, but I didn't this time. I just wanted the, the simple green and blue and white. Right, now how's the spacing looking? Not 
too bad. Well, now I'll turn this around without tipping the cups off. That would be a an interesting disaster. As you'll probably see, I'll start getting cells straight away. It'll go a bit crazy. I've got a fair amount of silicon in there. Um, and the paint's reasonably thin and I'm using Floetrol. So I'm expecting it to go a bit, a bit crazy. But that's, that's the look I'm going for today. Now as you pull the cup up, tip it backwards and try to get a more or less even line of paint along your canvas. And I'll just do the corners because they are always the hardest to cover. And the sides. Don't be tempted to put the dribbles in the middle of your painting again. Oh, look at you, nice cells in the cup. See, cells already, so it's going to be busy. out the excess on the edges just helps the paint later to slide off Ooh, that one was a bit wild didn't mean to do that that space is going to be hard to fill up oh It's not very good, but I'll see if I can fix it in the stretching out. And I've got heaps of paint. Um, how are we going? I've got most of the paint out. Now I'm not going to torch first because I've got cells happening. Since most of my paint's down that end, I'll do that end first and then I'll bring it back down this end. Now to fill in the gaps, you sort of like wiggle backwards and forwards. See, it's quite thin. carry it over to that side okay, do that corner We'll get quite a few more cells than this, especially when I torch. The dark green, I still got lots of dark green happening. Okay, now I'll get out the torch. It's a new can, so a bit flattened. Now don't go too close. Hopefully some of the light green will pop through and some of the white.
can see it's looking pretty busy. Uh, it'll get busier still as I stretch it out. Okay. Now I do have quite a bit of paint down here. I'll just do this side. Bring it back to the middle. I'll just do the other side. So it's going to be hard to get back up there later. A little bit too much dark green in there. I didn't want the dark green. Where's all my light green gone? I'll just do this side. Heaps of paint. Just wiggling it backwards and forwards down the canvas. Don't have to be in a big hurry. Now I might do that corner. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And then I'll do the other corner. And then we'll look at the composition. straighten up those lines a little bit. Okay. I'll take off some of that from the bottom because it's a bit distorted looking. there I think and every time I do this one it, it turns out completely different now I won't torch again because I'll just get way too many cells happening okay well a lot of paint tipped off. Cool. All right. Now, very important last step for these paintings is to get your um, palette knife and just go around all the corn, all the edges. Make sure they're all covered. 
and take off any drips. The drips look yuck when it dries, but they can also pull paint off your canvas. It's a good idea to take the drips off. You might need to go around a couple of times. See, I missed a little bit. Just scrape like so. I did want a, a lighter painting, but no, oh well, such is life. A lot of my white disappeared. And the light green and the light blue. Anyway, who would have thought? Reminds me of pond life, a life in a pond. Like you might look at it underneath a microscope and see all of those living creatures and algae and things that you might get in a drop of pond water. Now, if I, as you can see, it's a lot busier than a glue and water mix. So if the, the busy, busy look is what you're going for, use the flow troll. If you want a less busy look, use the, the glue and water mix. That's the, the lesson you can take home today. Now, the thinner your mix is too, the crazier everything will go. The thicker the mix is, the fewer cells you will get. Now cells are still developing here. I do expect most of it to fill up with cells in the next half hour or so. Okay, I'll just do the other side. Once more, I'll do it again while I'm cleaning up. I think that's most of it. All right. Yeah. Messy, messy. Anyway, I'll bring you in for a closer look. Okay, now I'm holding this camera above my head. So I hope I've got the whole thing in view. We'll just come in close. As you can see, it's gone cell crazy, which is sort of the look I was going for anyway. But we do have some interesting cells happening here. I did want it to look like busy pond water under a microscope. did you think? I think it turned out really interesting. I certainly got the busy pond life look that I was looking for, even though perhaps it was a bit darker than I was I was wanting. So perhaps next time I'll dispense with the dark colours altogether and just use all light colours uh, and brighten everything up that way. But yeah, I do like this painting and I hope it dries really well. Now I hope I've inspired you to give a multi-flip cut pour a go yourself, either using flow troll like I did today with a bit of silicon or a glue and water mix um, like I used in the, the last video to give a, a more controlled look with, with fewer cells. Now I need to go and clean up now but before I do I'll say goodbye to you guys. 
I hope you enjoyed the video today. Uh, if you did like what you see today, please take a moment to press the like button. It helps my content get found in YouTube land. And if you'd like to see more of my content, please take a moment to subscribe. So I hope you have a good week ahead and happy painting.